99% of the features of Tally are for free. And we saw previously that we can create a form, we can share this form, we can collect as much data as we want and we can export it. We can also use the integration immediately for free on Tally. However, with the Pro Plan, we have more features. And this Pro Plan is starting at $29 per month. Tally is a marketing tool very powerful. It helps us to collect data and to create form on one click. So with the Pro Plan, we have no Tally branding. We can collaborate with several members of our team. We can create workspaces, have custom domain, email notification, partial submission. We don't have any commission on incoming payments and we are going to see the payment after. And we have unlimited upload. But today I'm going to show you the first part, which is actually the custom CSS. Back on my dashboard, we can see that my pro plan is on. I'm going to click on my product manager form that I had before. And I can see here on settings that I got partial submission pro, tally pro, respondent email notification pro. All those features are related to the pro plan and I'm on the pro plan right now. If I edit my form and I click on design here, we can see that I got custom pro CSS here that is available. So if I click here, I can add my custom CSS. Let's say that here I'm going to add a color to every paragraph. So here this color is going to be red. Immediately, it's going to change the color here on my form. So the style that I'm going to apply here on the custom CSS is going to be applied on my form. So of course, there's a lot of stuff that I can change. For instance, let's say that here, I would like to change the size of this button, right? So I'm gonna go here, I'm going to go to inspect. And here we see that I got a button here. So if I click on plus, we can see that I'm, I'm, I'm actually targeting the button with a specific class that has been coded in here. So I'm gonna get back and I'm gonna say, hey, on my button, actually, I would like to have a padding left of 12 pixels, okay? And a padding right of 12 pixels also, okay? So if I'm doing this and I'm getting back, we don't see any change here. So I'm going to try to put probably more to see if it is because of the updating that I don't get the change, but we see it doesn't work. So basically what I can do here, it's exactly like in every CSS sheet, I can put my important uh, aspect here. And what we see is that it's applying to my, uh, uh, to my button. Now I can do the same on padding top. Let's say that on padding top, I would like to have 18 pixel important. And here we can see that I got this. I'm going to do exactly the same for the padding bottom. But here we see that we've got a problem, all right? So we can fix that. If we know CSS, there we go. We see that my button now is bigger. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to publish and I'm going to verify if my CSS has been applied on the production form. Okay, I'm on my production form. I got my text in red and I got my button down here that has some padding on the left and on the right. So my CSS has been applied. Let's give another example. Let's say that I would like to import a specific font. So right now, everywhere we see that we got pop-ins as a font. But let's say that I would like to mix two different fonts. When I go on Google font, I can select any font that I want and I can import them. So let's say that I'm going to, going to take Geologica, okay? So I got Geologica, which is very nice. I'm going just to add this um, font that we got in here. And down here, we, got, we see that we got this import here. So I'm going to try to copy paste this import uh, 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 link that we've got in here. So I'm going to say, hey, I want to import Geologica. And let's, co let's come back and let's just uh, check here the Geologica one. And I'm going to try to put all my titles in Geologica. So here we see that the paragraph is the title. So for now, I'm just going to try to do this. And as we see here, it changed the font coming directly from Google. All right. So I can mix font, of course, inside my tally form. If I'm using the custom CSS here, I can import my font directly from uh, Google Fonts. So everything we can do in CSS can be done in here. Sometimes you just have to add uh, uh, an important uh, key here to say, hey, 
actually override what is already written. But basically everything you can do in CSS and everything you can learn, you can add it in here into your form. If you already know CSS, it's useless for me to show you how to write CSS inside Tally. However, what I want to show you, it's all the classes that you can target if you want to really customize your form. So let's look a little bit at the code provided by Tally. And here we see that we've got, for instance, this Tally form cover, all right? So probably you want to target the cover to do something, an effect or whatever. You can target the tally form cover. And you get the tally form log here, which will probably um, target the logo. If I go inside uh, the form itself and if I scroll down, we already saw the tally block form title that we can target. And after we got, for instance, this tally colon list, all right? So probably if you have several elements, you would like to target by the specific classes that are created here. So here we see that we've got several columns, tally columns that we can also target. We got the tally block text, but you got to be um, safe on this because there's a lot of elements that are using the same uh, um, the, the, the same classes, all right? So sometimes probably you would like to target only one line, for instance. What you would do for that is either to target a specific element related to this line. Of course, when we do CSS on a form, we probably want to change the input. And down here, we see that I got the example of my apply to job with my input, and I got this tally block input email class that I can use. And if we look closely at the block itself, it's not an input, it's a division, right? And inside this division, we see here that we've got my, um, actually the placeholder that I got here. But if I want to target this tally block input, probably I would target here immediately, okay, immediately, the, uh, the div that is coming just after the actions, right? So I would target through the ID. So let's just um, update the page and let's come back to this element and let's see if we got exactly the same ID because probably what you worry about is that we have dynamic IDs that are generated in here. And as we see here, we got exactly the same as the previous one. So you could target this element by using this. So let's say that, for example, you would li like to have a border of one pixel solid red by default. As you see, you can do exactly the same here. If you go to design here, exactly down there, and you can target it in here. So let's try together. I'm going to expand a little bit the screen. There we go. And I'm going to target the second one, which is here. So I'm going to go here. And we see that I got a class, and this class is this one. So I'm going to put here a point, and I'm going to say, hey, for this one, I would like to have a border of one pixel solid yellow. And what's happening in here is that I succeed to target the input that I wanted. There's a lot of things that you can target inside your tally form. And to help you, the tally team put classes everywhere that you can target and that you can also apply CSS through the custom CSS module down there. Of course, this is a quick demonstration of what you can do with custom CSS. It would really depend on what form you are building and what you want to do. But basically, to overwrite the CSS of Tally, you would use important. Otherwise, it, the style would be applied by default to your form.